In this video, I wanted to show you guys how to use the knurling tool. I don't know if you guys have seen this thing kicking around the toolbox, but it is the knurling tool. Number one thing you want to point out is it fits in the tool holder just as if it's any other tool that we will be using. Some of the things you want to make sure you do before you start using this tool is you really want to make sure it's square to this chuck over here. So we showed you how to do that in an earlier video. Um, just want to make sure you do that. Make sure that the, the tool height is not quite as important because it's got a swivel head on it where it can kind of make some adjustments where needed. Um, we're going to show you how to set it up and then I'm going get, to get a few shots of it running. It's a very simple tool. So right now I kind of have it far away from the part we're going to be working. We're just going to get it close to where it's a, the wheels are directly over top and bottom of the part we're working on. And then we're just going to hand tight the part right now. We're going to be running the middle or lathe here at about, I think, 52 RPMs. We can go ahead and put a little bit of a cinch down on it. We want to take our oil. We want to oil up anywhere we're going to be knurling. This is a uh, pressure forming type tool, so it's going, to, it's going to have some serious down pressure. We're just going to keep tightening it up till we like the knurl that we have. Okay, so we're going to flip it on. It's going to start spinning. Make sure both your wheels are spinning. We're going to go ahead and tighten it up a little more. You can always flip it off if you want to make sure that you don't remove the tool. You, want to, you never want to start a knurl and then stop. You can take a look on here on the back side. You get up. That really fast. So after a little bit of knurling, we or started just tightening it up. We go ahead and look on the backside and see how that knurl looks. Right now it's pretty soft. We're going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit more tightening, and then we're going to go ahead and move into actually knurling down the part. Okay, so now we're back. We're going to go ahead and flip our machine on. We're going to go ahead and tighten it up a little bit more because we didn't like the depth of cut that we had or depth of knurl that we had before. We're just going to do a couple turns of this. Be very careful. You don't want to put your hands into that chuck. And that's about what I'm looking for. So now you have two options. You can go ahead and do the automatic feed down the, down the part, or you can hand do it. We're going to go do it by hand right now. A little bit more control on it for starting out. We're just going to slowly do a consistent knurl all the way down. Just slowly do it. As long as you're not, you know, stopping a lot and you know going back and forth, it should come out a nice cross hatch. There's there's about one inch worth of stuff done there. So like I said, if you just kind of stay in, you don't go back and forth a bunch, you don't change your depth a lot, you should get a nice consistent cross hatch. Now, big thing you want to do: never release the clamp midway through or try to move stuff around, you'll never get it back into place and you'll always have a, a funky line right in the middle of your part. So. Okay, I just wanted to get a little bit closer up view so you can see from this side how it's going to be looking. Um, we're just going to go ahead and again just knurl it on down. You are going to notice some sounds, some kind of creaking and things like that. It's totally normal. It's best to never stop and just kind of be one smooth motion. Very slow. Slower is better. There's no reason to go fast on this one. So when I stop, I let it spin for a second. And then we can go ahead and turn it off. Release the clamp. Back the tool away. And we've completed our knurls. Let's take a look at that a little bit closer now. So just wanted to kind of go over this one last little time. Um, notice here at the beginning that it's kind of choppy. That's because when we were talking on the, me when I was talking to the camera, I was just letting it run and it just kind of gets overworked and causes some problems. But so the thing I want you to take away from that is get your tool on there, get it down where you like it and start moving down the shaft. Um, you can see here, this is the knurling that we, we like. Um, if you want deeper or softer knurls, all you're going to do is adjust that adjustment knob and you're going you're gonna to see that they're going to get deeper or lighter. 
Um, one thing that you want to make sure if you're noticing some odd like inconsistencies, it's probably something in your setup. Um, maybe the, the tool isn't in there straight or you're just you don't have you have a loose um, knurling tool or something like that. So but that's pretty much everything you need to know about knurling. Uh, make sure you use a lot of oil. That's about that's it. Thanks.